ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Indeed the praise is for Allah we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds whoever Allah guides there is no one that can lead this person astray and whoever Allah leads astray there is no guide for him I bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except for Allah who is alone with our partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and last messenger to mankind brothers move forward a little bit please make room O you who believe fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with and do not die unless you are muslims o mankind fear your lord who has created you from a single person and from that person created his mate and from them to scatter countless men and women throughout the earth and fear allah from who you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the relations with the wombs that have bore you indeed allah is a watcher over you o you who believe Fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement as to what follows certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of the affairs of the newly invented matters in the deen and every newly invented matter in the deen is an innovation and every innovation is going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire as is known the month of ramadan is the month of the quran as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established in the quran shahrur ramadan alladhi unzila fihi alquran hudan lin nas wa bayyinat min alhuda wal furqan the month of ramadan in which the quran was revealed in guidance for mankind and the clarity from the guidance and the furqan the criterion between right and wrong this month is a blessed month without a doubt as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when ramadan came the first night of ramadan he said to the sahaba qad ja'akum shahrur ramadan shahrun mubarak indeed ramad the month of ramadan has come to you a blessed month and one of the main reasons why this month is a blessed month 
because this is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. The month where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself used to go over the Quran with Jibreel alayhi salam every night during the nights of Ramadan as mentioned in the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his last Ramadan, the last Ramadan that he fasted, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fasted nine Ramadans. The last Ramadan he fasted, Jibril alayhi salam came down, and he went over the Quran with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam twice that Ramadan, and it was an indication to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that his life was soon to end. So this is an indication or a benefit that we get from this is that when a person is about to die and the signs are there that death is soon coming, the individual is supposed to increase in his or her ibadah. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did in his last Ramadan, he went over the Quran twice with Jibreel, or they both went over the Quran twice that month, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did i'tikaf for 20 nights in the last Ramadan. And the scholars, they say, this was him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, preparing himself for death, because the signs were there that he was soon going to die. And we know that during the farewell hajj, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to the Sahaba, Perhaps I will not see you after this year. Again, because the Prophet Sallallahu was prepared to return back to his Lord. We have a narration on Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. Qala qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inna lillahi ahleen min al-nas. Qalu manhum ya Rasulullah. Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hum ahlul Quran, ahlullah wa khasatuhu. Anas bin Malik, he mentioned that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated that indeed for Allah, there are ahleen from the people. So the sahaba, they said, O messenger of Allah, who are they? Man whom? Who are these people? Who are the Ahaleen of Allah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whom Ahlul Quran? Right? These people who are the Ahaleen of Allah, they are Ahlul Quran. Ahlullah wa khasatuhu. They are the people of the Quran. They are the people of Allah and they are his elite. Meaning these individuals. These are the awliya of Allah, the close friends and allies of Allah. They are the people of the Qur'an. But what is meant by the people of the Qur'an? Some understand that a person who is considered to be from the people of the Qur'an is an individual who has a nice voice when he recites the Qur'an. This is not the meaning. It has nothing to do with recitation, and it has nothing to do with memorization. But it has everything to do with implementation. Implementing the Quran. Practicing the Quran. These are the people of the Quran. The scholars, they mention a person who has memorized the Quran. A person who has a beautiful recitation of the Quran. But he does not implement the Quran. This person is not from the people of the Quran. But a person who has not memorized the Qur'an, but he practices what he knows of the Qur'an, this is the one who is from the people of the Qur'an. It has everything to do with the practice of the Qur'an. In the month of Ramadan, without a doubt, the reciters, you, they are known, they become known in this month. Because this is the month of the Qur'an, people are reciting the Qur'an, we have the Qiyam layl and other than that. But understand, Ikhwan, Barakallah Fikum, do not restrict the matter of being from the people of the Quran to those who have a beautiful recitation, to those who know how to read the Quran, to those who have memorized the Quran. 
If you do not practice what you have memorized of the Quran, if you do not practice what you beautifully recite of the Quran and can read of the Quran, you are not from the people of the Quran. The people of Allah are the people of the Quran and the people of the Quran are those who practice the Quran. Here's the proof. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yu'ta bil Quran yawmul qiyama wa ahlihi alladhina kanu ya'maluna bihi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the peoples or the Quran will be brought on the day of judgment. And what's intended by here, meaning the people's recitation of the Quran. It will come on the day of judgment along with its people, those who used to practice it. Those who used to practice it. Alladina kanu ya'maluna bihi. Those who used to implement the Quran. This is what's going to come on the day of judgment. Your practice of the Quran. Not just your recitation. Yes, you get a reward for reciting the Quran. Yes, you get a reward for beautifying your voice. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, لَيْسَ مَنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَتَغَنَّ بِالْقُرْآنَ وَكَمَ قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The one who does not beautify his voice with the Qur'an, he's not from us. So yes, beautifying your voice with the Qur'an, having a beautiful recitation, this is a part of the deen. Wallah. Then the Prophet sallallahu he used to love to listen to the recitation of the Sahaba. Right? It would soothe his heart. Especially those from amongst them who had like the good recitations. The Prophet would sit there and listen. And sometimes the companions would not know the Prophet was there listening to their recitation. But it doesn't stop there, brothers and sisters. It doesn't stop at the beautiful voice. It doesn't stop at being able to read the Arabic language. You have to accompany implementation with your recitation. You have to put them together. If you do not put them together, you are not from the people of the Qur'an. We are not from the people of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ those who, we, those who we have given them the book, they recite it with the true recitation of it. Some may say, well, what about this verse here? They recite it with the true recitation. Listen to the interpretation of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an. Qala yattabi'unahu haqqa ittiba'ihi. The meaning of this verse, that they recite it with his true, recita his true recitation, they follow it with the true following. Not qira'ah. Not re just reciting. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, who was one of the scholars of the Sahaba, who was an authority when it comes to the tafsir of the Qur'an, he said the meaning of this verse is that they recite it with its true recitation, meaning they follow it with its true following. They implement it. It doesn't, re it doesn't stop. It doesn't rest on just being able to recite with a beautiful recitation. They follow it, they implement it, they practice it, they live it. The month of the, um, the month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. Not just the month of recitation, but the month of living the Qur'an, the month of implementing the Qur'an. Yes, there's a great reward. The scholars have mentioned, whoever recites the entire Qur'an gets over three million rewards. That's not taken away from the people. Because with every letter of the Qur'an, you get at least ten good deeds. Every letter. And the Prophet, he said, I do not say Alif Lam Mim is 10, but Alif is 10, Lam is 10, and Mim is 10. So for every single letter of the Quran, you get 10, you get 10 rewards, 10 good deeds. No one can take this away from an individual who recites the entire Quran or recites anything from the Quran. But it doesn't stop there. Then where's the implementation? Where's the practice? The month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. Yes, the month of reciting the Qur'an. The month of beautifying your voice with the Qur'an. But it also is the month of implement, implementing the Qur'an. And practicing the Qur'an. And following the Qur'an. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned, they fought or they recited with the true recitation, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he stated that this is the following. The Quran with the true following. And him and as well as Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they said, يُحِلُّونَ حَلَالَهُ وَيُحَرِّمُونَ حَرَامَهُ The meaning of reciting the Qur'an with its true recitation is that they make the halal of the Qur'an halal and the haram of the Qur'an haram. Meaning that they respect the Qur'an. They honor the Qur'an. Whatever Allah says is halal, they believe it to be halal. And they hold it to be halal. And whatever Allah says is haram, they hold it to be haram. And they believe it to be haram. And they stay away from the haram. These are the true people of the Qur'an. A person reciting Qur'an, beautiful voice, but he doesn't make the halal halal and the haram haram. Where is your respect for the Qur'an? Where is the honor for the Qur'an? You think that being from the people of the Qur'an is just having a beautiful voice. This is wrong, I have to keep repeating this. Because the mind state of the people, especially in the month of Ramadan, the people of the Qur'an are those who have the best recitation of the Qur'an. And you find people, they masjid hop from one masjid to another, looking for the best voice. But then the individual himself doesn't respect the words of Allah. Allah, he says, stay away from something, the person does it. Allah commands the person to do something, he doesn't do it. But he chases behind the beautiful voice, searching who has the best recitation, who has the best kunut dua, who has the best voice when he makes the kunut. You find people doing this in the month of Ramadan, hopping from masjid to masjid. Instead of understanding the greater point, which is the implementation of the Qur'an, the practice of the Qur'an. You can hop from masjid to masjid all you want and search for the beautiful voice all you want. But if you don't respect the words of Allah, listening to a beautiful voice is what to you? Who is the benefit? If you don't implement what you hear from the, from the party, from the reciter, when he recites the, the words of Allah, the book of Allah. أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله لي ولك. The Prophet بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. أما بعد، the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned. وَالْقُرْآنَ حُجَّةٌ لَكَ أَوْ عَلَيْكَ And the Qur'an, it is a proof for you or it is a proof against you. The question comes, how is the Qur'an a proof for you? How is the Qur'an a proof against you? The Qur'an is a proof for us. When we implement the Qur'an, now the Qur'an is a proof for the individual. Now the Quran defends the individual because the person is practicing the book of Allah. The person is living the book of Allah. The Quran is a proof for the person. But if the person is opposing the book of Allah, going against the commandments in the book of Allah, the Quran is a proof against him. No matter how much Quran this individual has memorized. If the person does not practice what he or she knows of the Qur'an, the Qur'an is not for them, it is against them. The person is not from the people of the Qur'an, if the person is not practicing the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He didn't reveal the Qur'an just to be recited. He revealed the Qur'an to be practiced. Call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, طاها ما أنزلنا عليك الكتاب ما أنزلنا عليك نعم طاها ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى الله سبحانه وتعالى mentions طاها we did not reveal the Quran and in the book of Allah we did not reveal the Quran upon you to be miserable 
And then to have a bad life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't send down the Quran to ruin the life of the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran so that the people can have a beautiful life, so that the people can have happiness, so that the people can attain uh, success and goodness and triumph. However, how do we attain that happiness? How do we attain the success by way of the Quran? How do we attain the triumph and superiority by way of the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in another verse, فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَدِلْ وَلَا يَشْقَى Whoever follows my guidance, he will not go astray and he will not be miserable. The guidance here is the book of Allah, the Quran. Allah says, whoever follows it, he didn't say whoever recites it, whoever memorizes it, no, whoever follows my guidance, he will not go astray and he will not be miserable. So the following of the Qur'an is how we attain happiness in the life of this world. Not just reciting the Qur'an. And again, don't understand my speech to mean don't recite the Qur'an. Recite the Qur'an. Get the reward for reciting the Qur'an. Beautify your voice with the Qur'an. Learn how to read the Qur'an. But don't let that be the end goal. Just having a beautiful voice. Just being able to recite. Don't let that be the end goal. Rather, you have to add to that the implementation. And then Allah, He mentions, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ أَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْقَى And whoever turns away from my remembrance, ذِكْرِي here means Qur'an. Whoever turns away from my Qur'an, then he will have a difficult, miserable life. A person who does not follow the guidance of the Qur'an, his life is going to be miserable according to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is for every one of us. Nobody is exempted from this. Any one of us, if we don't follow the Qur'an, if we turn away from the Qur'an, our lives are going to be difficult, we're going to have misery in our lives, we're not going to be happy. We're not going to find happiness and doing something that goes against Islam. Your life is going to be miserable. Our lives are going to be miserable. And then look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. And then on a day of judgment, we're going to raise him up and resurrect him blind. Why blind? When the man used to be able to see in the dunya, but now on the day of judgment, Allah resurrects him blind because he turned the blind eye to the words of Allah. He turned away from the words of Allah. So due to him turning away from Allah's words as if he doesn't see it, Allah will punish him on the day of judgment by resurrecting him blind and he will not be able to see. The month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. That means that we're supposed to be implementing that which we are reading of the Qur'an. And alhamdulillah, Every day we're striving to read a juice of the Qur'an. Make sure, check yourself. Are you practicing what you have read from that juice? The stories that you have come across from the prophets and messengers, are you following their examples of uprightness? The commandments that you are coming across, reading the juice every day from the Qur'an, are you implementing these commandments? Are you staying away from the prohibitions? Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad and likewise it has been reported on Al-Hassan al-Basri they both stated إِنَّمَا نَزَلَ الْقُرْآنِ لِيُعْمَلْ بِهِ Indeed the Quran came down in order to be implemented فَاتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ كِرَعَتَهُ عَمَلًا but the people have taken the recitation of the Quran as implementing the Quran this is the state of many people today. Practicing the Quran to people has only become reciting the Quran with a beautiful voice. This is practicing the Quran. But when Allah tells you in the Quran to be honorable to your parents, you don't find the person being honorable to his parents, but he has a, a beautiful recitation. When the Quran tells the husband, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And live with them in kindness, he has a beautiful recitation of the Qur'an, but he doesn't live with his wife in kindness. He doesn't treat his children with kindness. 
When the Quran says, Wala taqrabu zina, don't go near zina, he has a beautiful recitation, but he goes near zina. No, we have to rectify ourselves, Ikhwan, Akhawat. Can't just be people who know how to recite the Quran and then take our recitation as implementation. The Quran has come down for us to practice it, not just to recite it. And I'm speaking to myself first and foremost, and please nobody here think that I'm attacking anyone specifically. I'm giving a general message to myself and all of the Muslims here in this community and whoever is listening in. Because this is a problem in the Ummah. Not implementing the Quran. But yet we have many people who can recite with beautiful recitations. Where is the implementation? Where are the people of Allah? Where are the elite individuals who are the people of Allah, the allies of Allah? These individuals who practice the Quran, they are special with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we not want to be from the elite? Many of us, we strive so hard to be from the elite of the people of the dunya. Dreams of being on the Forbes list and the likes. Dreams of being in GQ magazine and the, you know, and the likes. We have aspirations for these work, for these worldly things. Where is the aspiration to be from the best of the people with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ahlu Quran. The people of the Quran. Ahlullah. Who are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the statement, يُؤْتَى بِالْقُرْآنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَأَهْلِهِ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ That the Qur'an will be brought on the day of judgment with his people, those who used to implement it, keep this matter in mind of implementation, not just recitation. Implementation along with the recitation. Don't consider your recitation of the Qur'an to be practicing the Qur'an. Make sure your intentions are sincere, ikhwan, akhawat. Implement the book of Allah. Because listen to this. And I'll end with this point. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, the first three people of this ummah who will enter into the hellfire, a man who fought in jihad, a person who used to teach people, and he used to recite Quran, and a person who used to give sadaqah, a lot of sadaqah. Everyone or each one of these individuals will be brought on the day of judgment and Allah will remind them of the blessings he gave them and Allah will ask them, what did you do with the blessings? The man who fought in jihad, he will say, oh Allah, I fought for your sake until I was martyred. Allah will say, you lie. You fought in order to be called brave. The man who gave sadaqah, he will say, oh Allah, there was not a path that you love to be spent on except that I spent in that path. I spent for that sake, you know, to make you happy for you, O oh Allah. Allah will say, you lying. You have lied. You only spent so that it be said that you are a generous person. And the point I'm mentioning in this narration for the man who used to learn the knowledge and teach the people. And he used to recite the Quran. Allah will ask him, what did you do with the blessings I gave you? And he will say, ta'alamtu al-ilm wa alamtuhu. وَقَرَأْتُ الْقُرْآنِ فِيك I learned the knowledge and I taught it to the people and I recited the Qur'an for you. Allah will say, كَذَبْتْ You have lied. You didn't do it for me. تَعَلَمْتُ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَمْتُ تَعَلَمْتَ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَمْتَهُ لِكَيْ يُقَالْ عَالِمْ وَقَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ لِيُقَالْ قَارِ وَقَدْ قِيلَ ثم أمر به فصحب على وجهه ثم تريح في النار ويطرح في النار كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah will disclaim or Allah will deny the claim of this individual that he learned, he taught, he recited the Quran for the sake of Allah. He didn't do it for Allah. Allah says you are a liar. You have lied. You didn't do it for my sake. But you did it in order that the people say that you are a scholar. You are an alim. And you recited the Qur'an in order for it to be said you are a qari. This man was reciting Qur'an. But he did not practice it. Because throughout the Qur'an, there is the commandment of ikhlas. 
The commandment of sincerity. And the man did not have sincerity. He was not from the people of the Quran. Even though he recited the Quran, he failed to implement the Quran. He failed to have sincerity in his heart. What Allah has commanded us with in the Quran. So he's not from the people of the Quran. Rather, due to the lack of his sincerity, he's from the people of the hellfire. Don't intend with your recitation of the Qur'an to show off to people. This is ibadah, ikhwan. This is a matter of implementation and practice. Not a matter of becoming famous. Not a matter of being known with the people. The month of the Qur'an, or the month of Ramadan, is the month of the Qur'an. Not only the month of recitation, but the month of implementation. Hukulu qawli hadha. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa subahana kallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك أكمل السنة